What's up guys, it's Kaze here. Oh god, The Rock's back at it again. So this week on whose storyline is it anyway, The Rock's in the gym and he's going in on Cody harder than he slaps his own forearms. And whoop him! And whoop him! He starts off once again mentioning that professional wrestling is cool again and it's all because of him. And a lot of people are either upset about this or running away with it, claiming that it's true. I think he's clearly working us, like, it was already cool before he returned. I think he's bringing a lot more attention to the product, but I think it was already just fine before he got there, you know? Well, at least as far as on-air content. Now, reports this week have come out that The Rock is probably going to be done after WrestleMania for a little bit, and this is no shock to many, but a lot of people are a bit disappointed but this would also explain why he's going all out on a week-to-week -week basis so like i said this week he's in the gym he happens to be holding a weightlifter's belt and on it it reads blood sweat and respect he then proceeds to cut one of the most disrespectful promos he's done so far he starts recalling what he calls the slap hurdle around the world but in my opinion his slap was that and he even recognizes it as a good slap he slapped the shit out of me he then mentioned what Cody went on to do on Monday Night Raw about two days later. Now for those of you who don't know, Cody on the March 11th edition of Monday Night Raw cut a very emotional promo about his family, about how he can't give the title to his dad, but he is going to give it to his mom once he wins it, and he even broke down in tears. Man, and The Rock took that and ran with it. Are you f***ing kidding me? You start f***ing crying? He says this is why your fan base is a group of crybabies because this is who they look up to. And then he also says that Cody Rhodes is not handing that title to his mom. In fact, The Rock is going to give her a different belt. And it's going to be the aforementioned weightlifting belt that he was holding in his hand. Except it's going to be covered in blood, sweat, and respect. Okay, he said blood and sweat, but he didn't say respect. That was me. So it seems like The Rock is just going to up the ante every single week. And I think we all know who he may mention next, but I believe they're going to save that for the week of WrestleMania. So, of course, he brings it to SmackDown. And there are actually a few things to note about his SmackDown appearance this week. Along with his new entrance that he debuted last week, he introduced a new theme, much similar to his old theme back in the day, but a lot more modern and cleaned up. So, this week SmackDown was in Memphis, and for those of you who don't know, The Rock started his career in Memphis. This was his early stumping grounds, and I actually found this out watching his show, Young Rock. So, because of this fact, he's more so playing towards the crowd instead of tearing them apart like he did that Arizona crowd. Cocaine and Matthews! So I noticed this time around he's wearing significantly lighter shades, and I don't know if this is because he's playing the face role, or because he's about to read music off a sheet of paper. By the way, it's the Return of the Rock concert. For those of you not familiar with the Rock concert, The Rock pretty much plays the guitar and sings his insults. It's led to some great moments over time. This one was okay, definitely not one of my favorites, but there were still some pretty decent one-liners in there. So The Rock ends the segment with reminding Cody's mom in front of the live national audience that he's gonna beat Cody, leave that belt bloody, and, and hand it to her. And then he's gonna whisper in her ear, what can I say but you're welcome. Except he sang it. I'm not gonna sing it. So yeah, this rivalry just keeps getting more and more intense by the week. And in the grand scheme of things, they haven't really done any physical altercations. Like there's been two slaps throughout this whole storyline this year. They're really selling the story based off of actions, based off of foreshadowing based off of just trusting that the fans know and are aware of what they're doing what they're building towards and then still able to swerve us all at the same time to be honest i think the bloodline storyline may be one of the greatest wwe storylines of all time it's been going on for three years it looks like it's finally coming to an end in a few weeks so shout out to them for building such a long-term storyline and keeping it interesting as the years go on for the most part, I know a lot of things went wrong throughout Roman's entire championship reign and a lot of things had to go right in order for this to be successful, but I think what they've done with what they were given, they've killed it. But that's pretty much it for this one guys, I got a pretty interesting video coming out really soon. I want to shout out all my subs, anybody who's liking and commenting, like we're almost at 500. Please follow me on all my socials, that's TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at Corey Kaze. If you're on break, get back to work bro, they're looking for you. Put your seatbelt back on and until next time, keep it Kaze.